Gospel of Matthew 19 verses 4. This is Jesus Christ speaking. And he's speaking to the religious zealots of his day, the Pharisees. And Jesus Christ answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Clearly, Jesus Christ is speaking about men and women. And he says, have you not read? He who created them made them male and female from the beginning. That means XY and X, X chromosome. You know, our modern age has given us the ability to see there are differences between men and women. And that's in our DNA. And you can't change that. What makes a male is the XY chromosome. What makes a female is the XX chromosome. That is a biological, scientific fact. Jesus Christ informed those who were coming to him concerning marriage, etc. The religious zealots of the day. That God made them male and female from the beginning. And if Jesus Christ says it, then who are we? Who are we? Or they? Or whomever wants to? Because they cannot stand God's laws. Try to change. Because they, but they can't change. In their mind they can pretend to change. What a male and a female is. A male and a female. Man and woman. XX. XY chromosome. If you're a male, you've got a Y chromosome. Every male has got a Y chromosome. Not one single female has got a Y chromosome. Not one. Now those who are claiming to no longer recognise themselves as male and they want to recognise themselves as a woman might say, I've got a Y chromosome and I'm a woman. No, you're not. You're a male. An XY chromosome male. You can live in fantasy land all you like. But I'm not going to come and live alongside you in your fantasy land. You've got no chance. I will stick with what Jesus Christ said. He who created all things said. Because he did create all things. And he made them male and female from the beginning. Like he said. So here we have people aged 16 and 17. To be allowed to change gender. First off. They can't change the gender. They might be living in fantasy land and they, on a piece of paper, claim to change the gender, but that's just a piece of paper. That is not a real change of gender. They are either male or female. In reality, biologically, as I've stated, XX chromosome or XY chromosome. You cannot change your biological gender. It's an impossibility. We know that. DNA tells us that. Modern science tells us that. And they're in denial of modern science. These are science deniers. Reality deniers. Young people aged 16 and 17 will be allowed to change their legal gender after the Scottish government rejected moves to keep the minimum age at 18. Yes, this is the Scottish government. This is a slippery slope, folks. A big slippery slope. And this is what they do. Slow, small, incremental changes. Slow, small steps. Baby steps into the adult monster that is coming towards us just over the hill. Yes, there's a monster coming over the hill, folks. And soon, oh my goodness me, it's just like abortion, isn't it? You're no longer allowed, allowed to be anywhere near abortion clinics in the UK. Unless, of course, you agree with slaughtering the millions of unborn children that get slaughtered every year around the world and the hundreds of thousands or thousands in the UK that get ripped apart in the womb, chopped up and thrown into the incinerator. Soon, as is now, with the abortion and the buffer zones around them, soon 
you will not be able to proclaim the reality, the biological reality, and of biological sex in the UK and around the world. In fact, in Canada now, you're not even allowed to help people who want help concerning their uh, sexual dysphoria or whatever they've decided to call it. But some SNP, MSPs were among those who argued that 16 is too young to make such a profound change. It's on paper, folks. This is... In terms of profound, yes. But they still can't change their real sex. They're living in denial. It should be a denialist change. Okay? They should be saying denialist change. But the government said, lowering the age was in keeping with other rights and responsibilities people gain at 16. Well, well if you're going to claim, Scottish government, that attempting to change your gender is responsible then there's something clearly wrong with the Scottish Government. They are not responsible. It came during a marathon debate on controversial plans to make it easier for trans people to change gender. You can't change gender. <laughs> you are a male or a female. The Scottish Parliament was due to discuss and vote on more than 150 proposed amendments to reforms of the Gender Recognition Act on Tuesday, ahead of the final vote on Wednesday. Scottish Conservatives have accused the government of attempts to rush the reform through before Christmas in an attempt to avoid proper scrutiny. Oh, what's new? Parliament had earlier been suspended for about half an hour when protesters shouted shame on you all and there is no democracy here from the public gallery as M MSPs voted against a move to make it harder for sex offenders to change gender. Let me read that again. Uh, MS MSPs voted against a move to make it harder for sex offenders. So they've actually... They, the, the, the Scottish government are supporting sex offenders who want to change their gender. <laughs> My dear me, this is where you're at, folks. This is where you are. This is the people who are claiming to be our government. Those who would be, we've given responsibility to. You voted them in. Members of the public were later allowed back into the galleries with us. MSPs described the decision to remove them as a disproportionate response to the heckling. The government wants to make it easier for trans people to obtain a gender recognition certificate. It's a piece of paper, folks. It means nothing. Which changes the gender recorded on their birth certificate. The proposal will remove the requirement for a diagnosis of gender dysphoria. Lower the minimum age for applicants from 18 to 16. And drop the time required for an applicant to live in their acquired gender from two years to three months. Or six months for people aged 16 and 17 with a three-month reflection period. During which they can change their mind. Efforts by some MSPs to keep the minimum age at 18 were voted down with Social Justice Secretary Sheldon Robinson saying that 16-year-olds have the right to vote in Scottish Parliament elections, leave home and get married. Yes, their normal responsibilities... But attempting to change your gender or your sex, which you can't change, living in denial, is hardly a responsibility now, is it? Miss Robertson also insisted that trans rights are not in, co in competition with women's rights. Yes, they are. And the proposals will be a significant step forward in creating a more equal Scotland where trans people feel valued, included and empowered. Dear me. Dear, 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 me, dear me. I'll try to man can't become a woman simple. You know, anyone who does obtain a GRC will need to live as their required gender for the rest of their life and could face prosecution if they do that. Oh dear. You know, that's just absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? Do you really think that's going to stick? Do you really think? Oh my word. These are talk. Oh, it's ridiculous. Opponents fear they could be a danger to women and girls, particularly around the provision of single sex spaces. Yep, we've already had lots of cases where those who have been a man and now claiming to be a woman have gone into changing rooms, wherever, lots of different places. I've read a few myself. 
and it's turned out they basically, I think it was prisons as well, they basically just wanted to go to the women's prison or to get a little fondle of a little girl or get into the swimming pool, fondle away. Yes, yes, folks, they're out there, folks. And this insanity will continue for as long as you allow it, for as long as you vote these sicko psychos into power. The amendment was defeated by 59 to votes to 64 with two abstentions, sparkling angry scenes in the gallery. However, the government backed another proposed amendment by SNP MSP Gillian Martin. That would mean anyone convicted of a sexual offence who wants to apply for a GRC will need to be fully risk assessed. If the risk is thought to be too high, that application could be refused. It follows concerns that predatory men could attempt to change their gender to gain access to female prisons. Seven SNP MSP. I've just said that, haven't I? Yeah. And so it goes on. Genesis 2 verses 18 to 25. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Amen. You know, clearly stating there that God put Adam to sleep and took from the side of man, Adam's rib. And woman came from Adam's rib. And in our day of DNA and scientific discovery, we can see how that happening 6,000 years ago, or just a little bit more, or round about that time, could have been done. Because DNA is a code, and it contains all of the coding, and the genetics, and the information, if you like, the ingredients for every biological living organism on this planet and for any specific ones. Cows have got their own DNA, rabbits have got their own DNA, flowers have got their own DNA, and man has got his own DNA. And so God took the rib from the man after putting him to sleep and created woman from man. And we know, I've done videos, and in our modern day also we've discovered there is one bone in man that regrows. Modern scientific discovery. One bone in man that grows, and can you guess which one it is? Which is fascinating. Yes, the rib. So if you lose a rib or they have to use your rib, for something else, a graft or whatever. Now, if they leave the periostrium intact, which is the wrapping around the rib, put simply, then the rib will grow back. It's the only bone in the human body that grows back. Discovered in our day, God did it 6,000 years ago. So, when people rant, oh, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to listen to the, what the Bible says. Well, you need to listen because the Bible tells us the history of humanity, where we came from and where we're going to. And that is all of us where we're going to. The Bible says that man fell, man disobeyed God. And therefore God in eternity past had a plan in his mind, conceived the plan. 
and put it into action from eternity past and the plan was man was going to fall but God was going to provide a covering for man's fall a sacrifice a scapegoat we've all heard of the scapegoat someone who takes the blame for someone else and that's who Jesus Christ was Jesus Christ was the scapegoat for his people for his sheep Jesus Christ who created all things in eternity past with his father conversation saying who was who will we send and Jesus Christ said here I am I'll go and he came some 4,000 years after creation in Bethlehem born as a child raised up and then he started his ministry and he was placed on a piece of wood to take the suffering and to take God's wrath upon himself for those that will believe into him for his sheep because of Adam and Eve's fall and he was placed in the ground for three days in a tomb three days later because the punishment for sin is death it's God's wrath we're all under the death penalty because we've all disobeyed God. We all think we're good, but we're not. That's according to man's standards we think we're good. But according to God's, God's standards, we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the standard of God. And because of that, the death penalty, the curse, God's wrath is upon us all. But Jesus Christ on that piece of wood 2,000 years ago took upon himself the wrath of God, the penalty for sin. He was the perfect sacrifice perfect didn't sin didn't disobey god during his earthly life and after three days after being placed in the ground after dying he conquered sin and death by rising from the dead because we originally were supposed to live forever with god but because of adam and eve god pronounced the curse on all of humanity and creation and death would come in and death would be part of the order of creation even though that was cursed creation was cursed it wasn't supposed to be that way we were supposed to live forever with god in relationship with god and jesus christ rose the first fruits from the dead and jesus christ is coming again not as he came the first time to deal with sin for his people but he's going to come again for those who were eagerly waiting for him and when he comes, the dead in Christ who have died already will rise first. And those who are left who are waiting for him will meet Jesus Christ and will meet those who have died in Jesus Christ. And they will be with him forever on this earth, a new heaven and a new earth. Return to its former glory where the lamb will lie down with the lion. Where the cobra and the child will be together. And there'll be no curse on creation, no death, no pain, no suffering. Because that's how it was originally supposed to be. But due to Adam and Eve who sinned, God put the, cre the curse on creation. But you will all rise. Not only those who believe in Jesus Christ. But all of us will rise. And those who have rejected Jesus Christ will also stand before God and give an account for their lives why they rejected him and those who aren't in christ will be thrown into hell that's what it says that's what the bible says that's what jesus christ said separated from god for eternity that's what it says but those who are in jesus christ will live with god for eternity forever that's what it says this is what this says this whole book 66 books 66 books written over approximately 1,600 years by 40 different authors. But the ultimate author is God himself. This is God's revelation to man. Just like Jesus Christ is God become, a, become man human. Took on himself human flesh. Took on himself human nature. Divine nature. Took on human nature also 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. And so, we also have the created creation, which demonstrates natural laws. All the laws couldn't have come about just by random chance per processes. It's impossible. 
fine-tuning of the universe, all these uh, proclamations and revelations that there's a creator. His word, Jesus Christ, creation. And there are no doubt others which people could name or use to say, well, look, we're living in a world which looks like there's a creator. You know, DNA itself. I think it was Bill Gates who said, you know, it's the, it's the most specified complex code in the universe. So we recognise DNA as a code. Codes don't come about by themselves. So if you confess with your mouth and believe into Jesus Christ, believe in his works, not your works, you're not good, I'm not good. It's the works of Jesus Christ. And that's, there's, there's no argument against that. You can't do anything. You're not good. You might be good according to your own neighbour's standards, you know, uh, what you think is good. But according to God's standards, we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the standard of God. And we need Jesus Christ to remove our sin because he took it upon himself 2,000 years ago. You believe into Jesus Christ that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Saved from what? The wrath of God. Because the wrath of God is coming upon this entire earth and all those who dwell in it who don't know Jesus Christ, who have not bowed the knee to Jesus Christ. Amen.